What is going on, everybody? This is Maximilian, and this is my 100th video. Now, I know technically it's not my 100th video. I do have some other videos on YouTube which aren't unlisted, or they're unlisted and they're private. But as far as you guys are concerned, this is the 100th video I've put out for you guys to view in public. Yeah, so sweet. I've hit a milestone. Um, yeah, I've been incredibly busy, but then again, I figured we had to hit this at some point. I was just so caught up in Thanksgiving break. I had family in town, lots of things going on, and a databases project, which I essentially did in two days. <laughs> yeah, that was crazy. So, aside from the fact that I've been extraordinarily busy, we have a 100th video now. Yay! Now, I know this is a bit anticlimactic because this isn't exactly the, um, I guess, the pizzazz that we were looking for in a 100th video, but rest assured, I'm going to be doing something special for this. So... Um, I think what I'm going to do, at least for the time being, is just continue to put out videos regularly, and I, I will let you know when it comes to the point that I'm like, you know, going to do something special for this. But for the meantime, I'm going to put out at least one or two more videos before next week, at least hopefully, because I will be going out of town for the entire weekend. I will be back late Monday, and then that starts the week, which is officially known as Dead Week during school. And if you've been subscribed to me for a while, or at least see my videos for a while, you would probably know that I've at least mentioned Dead Week once or twice before. Uh, Dead Week, for those of you who aren't in college, is the week before final exams start. So they generally call it Dead Week because, first off, um, well, campus is kind of dead. I mean, that's the idea behind it. Everyone's usually locked in their dorm or their apartment or their frat house or wherever because they're doing nothing but studying for exams. Um, they also tend to call it Dead Week because you generally don't learn any new material, um, at least for most professors. What they will do is they'll they'll officially stop teaching material. Like you've learned all there is to learn before this week, and once dead week starts, they'll usually just do a review. Either that, or they'll take their final exam early during that week, so that way you don't have to take another exam during that last week of the semester, which is finals week. And it saves you a little bit of time. It gives them extra time to get your um, get your exams graded, get grades posted. Because um, keep in mind that whenever your professor assigns a paper or gives you a test or an exam, they have to grade it as well. So it's basically like they're taking the test along with you, and they want to try and minimize the amount of work they have to do, which means they want to minimize the amount of work you have to do. It's a symbiotic relationship, or at least most professors seem to get that. Sometimes they don't, and uh, those are what we would call the bad professors. You don't you want to stay away from those people, the ones that give you tons of homework and tons of exams and don't really understand that you have a life outside of their classroom. So yeah, that's what the next two weeks of my schedule is going to look like. Um, going out of town this Friday... Getting back on Monday, I've got a week of classes or whatever. Um, actually, it's kind of hard to say I have a week of classes because I really don't. Um, essentially, this dead week is going to be me writing a research paper because um, that's essentially my English 60 final exam. Because uh, in normal classes, you have a final exam at the end of the semester. Well, in some classes, professors are like, you know, I really don't like giving final exams because I don't want to be here during finals week and I don't really want to have to, you know, like proctor you guys and grade an exam after you take it during finals week because that means I have to stay here longer. So rather than give you an exam, I'll just give you like some big assignment due at the end of the semester. And um, in this case, this is one of the classes where I have to do that. Um, the English 60 classes, it's all about research paper, uh, research papers, um, technical writing, things of that nature. So I have to write an argumentative paper about some topic that's relevant to readings we covered in the class. And um, actually, my paper of the topic of my paper is going to be um, internet-based marketing and the necessity for um, essentially driving your business through the internet or using the internet as a marketing channel for your business. So that's what I get to write about. Yeah, I know that sounds so incredibly exciting to all of you right now. You can't, you just can't wait to hear my musings on internet business and marketing. But <laughs> that's what, I'm, excuse me, that's what I'm going to be doing for the next week or so in school. Hopefully, I mean that's the idea. Now, more than likely, I will put this off to the last possible minute because I am a procrastinator, I will admit it. I'm pretty sure most of you are too because it just seems to be something that's generally true of any kind of student in general. Like, I I know I've met the few people who are the exception to the rule who always start things the minute they get it and they budget their time very well and plan things out accordingly. I am just not one of those people. And I swear it's genetic because my mom was the same way all throughout high school and college. Like, she was a huge procrastinator. She's told me stories of how she's put things off to the last minute, and, I mean, like, yeah, I had to have gotten this from you. I'm pretty sure I didn't get it from my dad, because he's probably, like, the most 
well organized, uh, practical man that I know. Like he does everything efficiently. He does everything by the book, well organized, well planned out. So if it is genetic, it's most certainly not from my dad. Definitely from my mom. So yeah, I am a procrastinator. I tried to change my habits and I can't do it. I don't know why. I just I suck at not procrastinating. Either that or I'm just really good at procrastinating, but depending on how you look at it. So yeah, if I don't finish that paper within that week, it's going to be a little rough, to say the least. But considering I don't have much else going on during that week, it would behoove me to at least get that out of the way. Because I have two exams during finals week. Uh, fortunately, I just found out today that I don't have to take a physics final. Yes! So that's one class that I'm actually completely done with this semester, even though there's still classes going on. There's still recitations, which is essentially like a homework review class that they force you to go to. Yeah, I don't have to go to any of those anymore. I literally don't have to turn in anything. There's still a homework assignment due. There's still like one lecture quiz, but I actually have enough points in the class to where I have an A no matter what I do. So I could literally just sit in my dorm for the rest of the semester every time I had physics and my grade would still be an A, so, which is really awesome because it essentially came about from me doing much better on the last exam than I thought I was going to do. So that's another benefit for you guys. Um, definitely study very hard for your exams. Because there are a lot of classes where um, your exams are the bulk of your grade. And when I mean the bulk of it, I mean, like, if you do well on your exams, you've essentially passed the class without even doing any other work. Because professors place so much weight on the tests. So if you have one of those professors or you're in one of those classes, if you do very well on your exams, you can skeet by a little bit on the minor things like homework assignments or lecture quizzes and still get away with it. Not to mention, you can also finish your class early by automatically securing your A, and then you don't have to worry about that. So now, instead of having five classes for the rest of the semester, I have four classes to worry about. Soon to be three, actually, because um, I have a macroeconomics class where we have our last exam, which is due, I think, next Thursday. So a week from today. Tonight's Thursday when I'm recording. It's actually, yeah, it's Thursday. Early Thursday morning. So yeah, a week from today, I'll be done with macroeconomics. No, I, I pretty much have I have a guaranteed B. I know that. But um, I really want to try to get an A in that class because it's it's easy enough to where, like, I should be able to get an A. At least I feel like I should be able to get an A. But it's, I, I don't know. It's one of those weird scenarios. Like, it's, the, it's so easy to get a B in this class. But to get an A in the class is just nigh impossible. Mostly it's because any of the math that's on the exams is based on equations that the professor teaches in class. However, none of those um, equations or graphs are in the book which he is supposed to be teaching from. So uh, it's a very awkward catch-22. Uh, not only that, but his handwriting is atrocious. So even if you do show up to class and you pay attention all the time and you follow carefully what, he's, what exactly he's doing and what he's saying, you still couldn't understand what he's writing down on the board. And I don't, I don't know if any of you guys have ever tried to orally explain a math concept, but if you can't write it down for someone to see it, like it's just not happening. So... Uh, I mean, if I do get a B in the class, which would suck, yes, um, I don't want to get that, but, I mean, I, at least I can say, well, it's partially his fault, not to say that, like, you know, it's not entirely my fault for not doing well in the previous exams, because I will admit I haven't put a lot of effort into that class, but at the same time, you know, it's not entirely your fault. There are professors who occasionally have bad practices or do things which aren't exactly reasonable. But yeah, that's my current situation. So right now, I've got like three and a half classes left for this semester. Um, one of my classes is basically um, the research paper, English 60. So if you want to call that a class, yeah, I do have random homework assignments here and there and reading assignments, but those take, like, those are no big deal. Not a big deal at all. Um, and then after that, I have um, I have databases, which we just turned in our final project for which was, like, you know, one of those marathon two-day projects that we somehow managed to get done somehow and got it working just in the nick of time. I actually added one of our one of our critical features in class while some other people were presenting. So, yeah, it was that down to the wire. Um, so right now for that class, all we have is a final exam, and that shouldn't be too difficult. So that one, I, was just, I got a paper for a class, a final exam for a class, and I think two quizzes and a final exam for linear algebra. And then one take-home exam for macro, which p could potentially give me an A, but probably won't. So three and a half classes for the rest of the semester at this point. So my workload is starting to lighten a little bit, but this is where the pressure really gets on you because you got to finish those last big things in the semester. Really, the research paper is going to be the biggest hurdle for me because I suck at writing. Like, I know 
um, at least people who have read my papers before tell me like, no, you're good at writing. You're good at writing. And I mean, maybe my, my test scores and paper scores reflect that, but I am the slowest writer in the entire world. It literally takes me two hours to write one page for a paper. And I'm not sure if it's because I'm overcritical of what I'm writing rather than just trying to crank a draft out and then go over it. Like, I just can't put words onto paper to save my life. Even if it's something that I'm, like, really passionate about and something that I'm, I guess, somewhat of an expert in, I just can't do it. So writing papers are very difficult for me. And I'm hopefully going to have to get this one done fairly soon because it's going to be based on the paper I've already written for the class. It's it's kind of like expanding it, doubling it in size. So at least that'll be nice. I have something to work with, but still, it's writing, and I'm not looking forward to anything like that at all. But yes... We finally have a 100th video up. I apologize for the long delay. This is generally one of the busiest times of the year for me. But once Christmas break comes around, I'll be able to throw up a video every now or then, or so at least a day or two. But yes, thanks for tuning in again, guys. Thanks for making it 100 videos. It's been awesome for having you subscribers, having you view my videos. Thank you very much. See you later.